Now I'm going to give you an experience. Just close your eyes. Put your attention on your... on the brain. I'm going to quickly go through a technique which really takes uh, hours to practice, but I'm going to give it to you in a few minutes so that you can do it later on at your leisure at home. This is a Ramalingam technique. He sees the astral brain as a golden lotus. Porpangayatin pudunaravum. This golden lotus is oozing out a nectar, a fresh nectar. So when I do the technique, Ramalingam will come and bless everyone because he is so dedicated to the process and he is still there in the light body. There is a nectar oozing out from the golden lotus, which is the brain. Just imagine the brain as a golden lotus. And then there is a honey or nectar oozing out. There is another water that comes out. Mamadi Madhuvum, there is a moon, which is the right brain, and it secretes another nectar into it. All that are falling into the third ventricle, which is the middle of the brain, just above the, below the thalamus. The pituitary is secreting a milk-like substance. Then Narpanjagamum. There are different parts of the brain. There are five different parts of the brain which are the uh, cortex area, they all secrete. Now they all are combined. It becomes the elixir. And that elixir stops death. Turns the body into light. Visualize the body into light. That elixir is dripping inside and sometimes you can even feel the taste of the elixir on your tongue. It's a real happening. It's not just an imagination. Then the whole body becomes alive. You are revitalized. 
Tailings are spreads all over the body and turns the cells into the body, into light. Arut perum jyoti Arut perum jyoti Tani perum perunai Arut perum jyoti The, the God, the God of light, wants you to have the light body. God doesn't want you to have pain, diseases, disappointment, and death. Arut perum jyoti, arut perum jyoti, tani perum karune, arut perum jyoti. God has infinite compassion. It's not his intention to punish us. It is our own intention, ignorance, that punishes us. He is pure light. You are pure light. That's the reality. See your body as light. Om Shanti 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 Keep your eyes closed. Relax. Slowly, slowly come back to yourself and open your eyes. Thank you, Dr. Bly, for that profound experience. Now we are going to take some questions from our chat audience, the global Audience listening. This is from Je Jennifer Sadana. Dr. Ply, can you speak to an experience of light entering the body through the crown of the head and passing through the body? Yeah.
there is a, the crown chakra, which is at the top of the brain. And the light has to come through that chakra into the third ventricle. But at the same time, you will have to have all your life energy from the lowest chakra, also to go up and meet the light in the third eye. And when that happens, there will be the union of the individual soul with the universal soul. All your uh, uh, life energy is within the lowest chakra, where it is in the form of your reproductive juices, like the semen and the ovum. And uh, they have tremendous amount of power because they can create life, the semen and the ovum can create life. But we waste the life and life energy. It will be transformed through the meditation process, meditative processes, which I will be uh, talking about throughout the uh, Light Body program. I will spend a couple of months on that. And then take that energy. Otherwise, I could be in an invisible world. Take them to the third ventricle. And then the light will descend into the third ventricle. There will be a union of that. And one that, once that union happens, then the whole body, the third eye opens, the whole body will turn into light. Thank you for that explanation. And I know that there, we're going to talk more later about the different modules of your program. And I understand crown chakra breathing is one of those. So we'll, we'll go into some more detail then. So the next question we have is, once we obtain the live body, can yeah. we leave the earth and come back whenever we wish? Once you have the light body, then you do whatever you want to do. So I came back because I could not give the light body to so many people. Then if you are in the light body, then you are limited in your interaction with people. So you have to have a flesh and blood body so that you can meet and talk to people and present it. And uh, that's why I chose to come, come back, and I came back. Mm -hmm. So you, you can do, you, you can choose not to come back, and then live there and in the, as a light body, and then help people from another way. And the, but I chose that this is the best way I could do it, so you could do, uh, so I came. So you can do whatever you want to do, you have infinite amount of freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have in the next question, um, John Francis. What is the definition of enlightenment? And is that the light body? Well, there are, uh, I think I can best answer your question through the example of Sri Aurobindo. Sri Aurobindo has the largest ashram in the entire world. A whole village is Arrowville, is his ashram. He was dedicated to the light body. For 40 years of his life, he came out of his room only like three times in a year. That's all. For a few minutes and then gave darshan and came, went back. But what happened? He was psychologically enlightened. He admitted it. But the body was not enlightened. When the body was not enlightened, he was growing older and older and older, and he even became blind, you know, he lived a long life. In his 80s, he became blind, and he was still talking about the light body, but he confessed that he did not succeed. Because, so there is a, two types of enlightenment. There is enlightenment on the level of the mind. 
you will be liberated from uh, the thought process. I mean, even there, there are many, many uh, layers of enlightenment, even psychological enlightenment. You will have thoughts and still enlightened because thoughts don't bother you, that's one level of enlightenment. There's another level of enlightenment that thoughts will not be there and you have to really make an effort just like in the case of Raman Maharshi, he has to really tremendously work hard, 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 hard to get a thought inside his mind. Okay, that's another type of enlightenment. So there is psychological enlightenment of the brain gets enlightened. There is also enlightenment of the body, the mind and the soul. That's what I represent. Uh, you have to have enlightenment on all the levels. You cannot have just an enlightened body uh, and the mind has, um, remains ignorant. So it's, it has to be, you know, all the three together. That's total enlightenment. Uh, but some people settle for, well, their body is uh, inessential and it is going to die. So let me die. And those people have really suffered from cancer. And then, uh, and then say there, but still uh, the cancer pain was real. You know, in the case of Raman Maharshi, the doctor who attended to him asked him, so what's the, what's the difference? I am dying, I'm, I'm, I'm an unenlightened, you are also dying, but uh, I'm your doctor, I'm attending on you, you are crying in pain. So what's the difference? I'm getting confused here. So I don't subscribe to the model. Okay. So the best model is enlightenment is for the body, mind, and the soul. Next. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so those are all the chat questions we're going to take from now. We're going to take some more later, so please stay tuned and continue to send them in. We have more questions than we can get to right now. So uh, next we are going to invite our panel of uh, doctors. And Dr. Ply, you can take a break now if you'd like, and we'll begin speaking with Dr. Uh, Lionel Bassoon. Lionel, can you hear me? Oh, you're muted. Let's get that taken care of. I think you're okay now. Milo, can you? No, not yet. Nope, you're still muted. You might want to try to click the red microphone on the upper right corner. I think I... For a moment there, you were unmuted. Better? Yes. <laughs> oh, great. Thanks. It's my first time on the Hangout. It was killing me. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Thank you so much for joining. I know you're joining us live from New York City. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, and you have been studying with Dr. Ply for almost 20 years now, right? It's approximately 18 to 20 years. I've, it's been so long I've lost track of time. Right. And you have a flourishing medical um, profession. Right. My practice is here in Manhattan, and it's uh, sports medicine, hormone replacement, cosmetic medicine. So it's a very diverse practice. Great. And uh, I know through your experiences with Dr. Pillai, you've had many of them. And we've heard about some of them on other uh, events and in person as well. Can you tell us a little bit about your experiences with the DMT meditation that Dr. Pillai gave out at a, another event? But first, what is dimethyltryptamine? It's considered the spirit molecule, 
right? So from a doctor's perspective, what is it? And then how has it affected you from a spiritual perspective? Dimethyltryptamine is a molecule that's made in the pineal gland. And this, this molecule is involved in when you have dreams or you have visions. The Native American shamans in South America and around the world, they drink medicine, uh, which they call ayahuasca. And in this brew, they naturally get dimethyltryptamine. The dimethyltryptamine is responsible for the vision that they see during these uh, ceremonies that they do. Interestingly enough, after the ceremonies is completed, they will tell you they've seen certain things about your health. Uh, they will tell you plant remedies, uh, people hear music, they see colors, they see all sorts of interesting things. So to me, when Baba decided he was going to teach this meditation, it would be an interesting way to activate the pineal gland and get this molecule naturally working in your body as opposed to ingesting a hallucinogenic drug because Baba's really dead set against uh, people taking any kind of hallucinogenic drugs or any kind of uh, uh, drugs, so to speak, uh, to, uh, for any purposes. So he, when he decided to teach this as a meditation, I was really excited about it. And during, during that time last summer when he taught the meditation, um, I think we were in California. It was really a really interesting experience. I, I know many people have had other experiences. But during that time, it feels as though my brain, my head was turning into light, my hands and it was interesting, as, as I tr tried to analyze it, the light will go from white to blue, a <laughs> different color. So it was, as, as long as I stayed still and didn't try to engage logically to dissect it and analyze it, it just stayed light. And sometimes I, I do this at night, and it gets so intense I have to basically go to sleep because I, I don't know how to, to handle it sometimes. But it's very, very powerful, and, and usually if the longer I do it, the, the intensity increases, and, and, and those nights I actually have the most amazing dreams. So from, you, from studying as a doctor the molecules and then experiencing this spiritually, how, is, how do you put that together? Well, <laughs> that's a really difficult thing because this is about self-evolution, but, you know, when you yourself evolves as you evolve obviously the people around you sense that difference in you it, it, it people around you could feel there's a difference in you and it's almost as though you attract people to you so people who would like-minded consciousness want to be around you uh, as far as a medical practice you know, it's interestingly in my practice most of our patients seem to be interested in things like world peace and, and, and enlightenment and, and improving their consciousness. So, so when you have these kind of people to work with, it makes my work a lot easier. And, and it, it sometimes, you know, they even inquire as to, hey, you know, where can I learn more about what you're doing? And so sometimes we, I direct them to the website. Excellent. So it sounds like you're able to integrate uh, pretty easily your medical practice, your scientific mind, with your spiritual experiences and studying with Dr. Pillai for such a long period of time? Well, it's almost impossible to se separate it because the information one gets from Dr. Pillai is not something you could learn anywhere. It's yeah. not written in textbooks. You can't go and study it. It's, and as far as I'm concerned, you're not even studying with him <laughs> because he's imparting this knowledge to you that you can't find any place and you can't go home and analyze it and logically dissect it. So it's something that was given and other people sense it and they want it. Mm -hmm. So, and once they want, or they see their difference in you, the way you carry yourself, your peacefulness, your happiness, and you know, everybody's attracted to happiness. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody wants to laugh and smile and enjoy life and be happy and, and you know, look to some high purpose in life and they sense it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm really glad you mentioned that about what you can't get in a textbook or even what Dr. Clyde said <coughs> words. There's so much more energy and empowerment behind all of that. And I know that you know that more than uh, most uh, other people 
uh, especially the people who have been studying with him. So um, thank you for reaffirming that. And of course, those people who are participating in the Light Body Program, the, the one that happened last year, as well as the one that's happening this coming up year, get a more vivid experience of that, wouldn't you say? I think they do. And when you talk to the people in the program, these are the things they sort of express. We were in India and everybody was really excited about the program because it's not about how much words you could say or how much things you could write down and memorize. It's about just being in Baba's presence, the Dr. Pillai's presence and, and um, you know, hearing it directly from him. And even though you may not actually remember it, it resonates someplace in your consciousness. I mean, I, w I was just thinking about this um, over the last few days and I realized I've waited lifetimes for this moment. I've waited so long. It's not just I've been waiting five years or 10 years. I must have waited five, 10, 15, 20 lifetimes to have this opportunity to hear about the light body and to engage in this pathway and realize that everybody who's doing this it's not something they read about the, on the internet that says, hey, you know what, I think I'm going to jump in on this. Mm -hmm. You know, they've uh, been waiting lifetimes. And yeah. so to all you guys, you know, I'm glad we've waited long, long enough and uh, the time is here. And Absolutely. So that's, and that's, that's what all good. Dr. Ply says, that certain people will be drawn to this. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bassoon. I would uh, love to keep talking, but we do need to move on to our next doctor on the panel.